Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. In my last video, I showed you how I made this apple press as well as all the related accessories to go with it. Today, I have my friend Steve here who actually brought me this project and is gonna actually show me how to actually use one of these things because I was just making this thing. I don't know what it does or how to, how to work it. My name is Steve Hans. I'm from uh, Number 12 Cider House. We make, uh, and this is my son Henrik, and uh, he's uh, my trusty assistant for, for this kind of project. And uh, we make uh, artisan ciders in Buffalo, Minnesota. We've got a couple of the bottles here with us that we'll try later after we're done with this project. All right. uh, but this uh, uh, cider press is based on a really, really classic design that was published by um, a Canadian organization that uh, studied uh, cider apples and cider making. and. Uh, uh, and then we've made some improvements on it and of course Matt has put some of his own touches as well. What we've done so far is I, I brought um, six bushels of apples, uh, a blend uh, that I hope is going to make some good hard cider for us and we've, uh, we've washed those apples and we've sorted the apples and we've uh, cleaned up our equipment and now we're ready to we're ready to grind the apples into a pulp and then we're gonna put them in the press and uh, see if it works. <laughs> we're gonna squish apples. We're gonna squish apples. <laughs> okay. The apples that we're using today we've got uh, three different kinds of apples. We have um, Cortland apples, uh, we have keepsake apples, and we've, ha we've got some crab apples and I'll call them no-name crabs <laughs> crab apples are really good here in Minnesota because we don't have much for uh, classic cider apples that have a, a quantity of tannin in them and the crab apples uh, are known to be pretty tannic. Not all crab apples but I've uh, I sampled uh, some of these crab apples uh, as, as Matt witnessed earlier and uh, it, it has a bitterness to it that made it not very pleasant to taste. The grinder that I have is a rather expensive electric grinder. It's a two horsepower uh, uh, motorized grinder that will cut through these six bushels of apples pretty quickly. Um, if, uh, if you're just doing a backyard uh, kind of operation, there's, a, there's another brand called a Westum grinder, uh, which is just sort of a cast iron uh, version that you hand crank kind of like you know when you were a kid and and the parents decided you should make ice cream uh, it's uh, it's it's really not that bad uh, I will say I used uh, such a grinder last year in my driveway four times and and we did do up to 10 bushels with that uh, and while that was uh, quite a bit of work uh, it, it really kept pace with the with the press so uh, that you could you could buy one of those for two 250 bucks this one right here is going to set you back uh, more like a thousand. You can just go at it with like a hammer and start bashing the apples? You, uh, you know, uh, you could. It's going to take you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, every second that goes by, you're going to want a bigger and bigger hammer. <laughs> what books will say about it is that you want those pieces to be uh, a pea size or smaller. You made this very nice looking uh, tray which is gonna which is gonna hold the juice uh, in, at, while it drains into this hole where we've got a five gallon bucket and uh, and we have a, uh, a little rack uh, beneath that um, where our uh, first layer will sit on and then we have what we call a form here and that form we're gonna use to to create a square out of this cloth which will have all of the apple uh, pumice in there uh, and, and that cloth will hold the first layer of, uh, of pumice. It's already just wanting to drain apple juice before we even get it in there. You'll definitely have the uh, yellow jackets and such visiting. And you can hear the juice already draining into our bucket. It's, uh, we haven't even started the press yet, but it's going. All right, that's our one layer. Now we're going to take this uh, cloth and fold it over on itself. Really substance right there. 
Then we're going to take the rack off. That on top of it. Alright, you want to get that over there, bud? Alright. Yeah, we're going to get the corners on the side. Okay. Now we're going to do another. So, double layer. Wait, wait, we do double layers. Should I grab the other bucket too? The other bucket? Nope. We'll, we'll need, but we will need it soon. And we might need to grind a little bit more because uh, this potentially could hold more than three bushels. <laughs> you want to get the other one of these, Henry? And you do want to kind of be uh, careful to have these not be too lopsided because when you start putting pressure on it, <laughs> it might want to go sideways. We might have designed a press that could hold uh, more than three bushels, which is cool. I like that. That is a lot of apples. You didn't think that would fit, did you? <laughs> well, I had no idea, but I didn't think so at all. <laughs> I think we can fit another layer, and I think we're going to have to do another uh, half bucket full of apples. Maybe, maybe just grind the, maybe just grind the rest out if we can fit it. You can extract the juice um, by putting them in a press like this. Um, but it just takes a while. You, you just, you, just uh, you fill up the press and you put the pressure on, you let it set for a few hours. And yeah, you can, uh, and that's uh, another way of getting the juice out of them. And, and actually some people like to do that because the, uh, the apples kind of uh, lose some of their uh, water weight in that process. Okay. And, uh, and so it makes like for a more, say, concentrated uh, juice. And, uh, and you get more, more of the flavor components of it. You know, we're looking for a particular yield. Uh, you know, apples um, are gonna yield, you know, on the order of uh, two to three and a half gallons per bushel. So uh, in addition to waiting for it to stop leaking, you're, you're also, you're gonna, see what how what you've gotten out of it and if you haven't gotten what you think you should get out of it then you you're going to put more pressure on it you always want to be part of it you know <laughs> hi yeah well we're making uh apple juice do you like apple juice i don't think he's ever had apple juice actually oh yeah it might be something to try today okay. right there, my love. I don't like to be pissed. all right you're a little too young for your first uh feasting all right, now we are officially ready to start pressing. All right, so we got our top board here. Yeah, we're probably gonna be full on this fiber before we even. <laughs> Do a couple more. Three, four. That's good. Stop there for a second. You see where that hole is? Yeah. I'm about to remove this bucket from there, and it's gonna leak all over the patio on this heat that glass. <laughs> You ready? One, two, three. I did it. No. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, are you ready to take it out? One, two, three. Now we're putting pressure yep. down here. That's good. Using our bottle jack. Oh, wow. Ah. Just pouring out. Yeah. Amazing. How you doing there, bud? Good. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's sogging. Well, once you get to the bottom of that bottle jack, we'll just let it sit for a little bit, and then we'll put in some spacers. Oh. So now we can get another six inches out of it. Do it until you can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure works. Oh, 
think we've got enough for maybe three more layers. So I'm going to take three layers off and leave the rest on there. Okay. Uh, so we'll kind of repress those, if you will. And so I'm going to take, uh, yeah. Oh, it's like <laughs> pancake. Okay, we're going to take off one, two. I'm going to take off, can you grab that rack? I'm going to take off three layers. I'm going to go put this in with your sawdust. And I think we reached the end of that one. I'm going to have to put some more space in there. Look at that. We got 17 and a half, 17 gallons. That's a lot of juice. We did uh, press six bushels of apples today in this press. Uh, the press uh, has uh, capacity, as it turns out, to hold four bushels at a time. Uh, the, uh, each individual um, rack, the, the interior diameter is 16 and 5 eighths inches. Yeah. And uh, um, we had a height that allowed us to go an extra two layers, so it was uh, six layers high. Out of that six bushels, we pressed uh, about 18 gallons. Uh, which means we had a good yield. Um, usually uh, apples will press out between two and a half and three and a half uh, gallons a bushel and we had two bushels of crab apples in here which usually don't yield very much. So pretty impressive. We also uh, have uh, tried some of our product and uh, delicious. Nice. Good taste, good color. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, the wooden press here is something that's going to be uh, available for purchase very soon Whatever. and uh, I think uh, it proved to be incredibly functional for uh, small professional or avid uh, home cider maker use. Cool. You think? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. This, yeah. this is a fun process. Yeah. I had a lot of fun watching and recording it all. I didn't get to do a whole lot of it but it was fun to see and I can see how this can become kind of an addiction that you kind of get drawn into. Okay. Definitely an addiction. I don't know yeah. squishing stuff was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Just squishing things. Grinding and squishing. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions on the press or anything back in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.